per school to a single home address. Currently, we can only accommodate one address per student. If we find that we have more flexibility in the future, we will work with families to potentially add a second address. We won't know that for a little bit as we work through that. Right, so that was from Lisa. And this is Geneva Nice from Lebanon. I'd like to suggest to the board that the school mark on each, child each child's designated workspace in the classroom. Masking tape can be used for this and would allow the children to remove their masks when they're in their space. The main Catholic schools are taking this approach. I'd also encourage the board to read the main state Catholic schools reopening plan, which is available online. Thank you again for all your work in these challenging times. And lastly, our last question thus far is from Sarah Harvey in Berwick. Now that we have a class schedule and the surveys have been completed, I'm wondering how many kids will be in the school at any given time. I'm also wondering how the school, NHS in particular, will handle students moving from one class to another, as these times in the hallway will have the largest crowds. So two grade levels at a time at the high school. Average class size is between 200 and 220. Um, the high school admin has developed a protocol for moving from one class to another and has reduced transitions as much as possible. I don't have the detailed plan, but that's, that's it. That's our public input for this week. <clears throat> Thank you. Sure. Great. So just to recap, last time when we met, we said that we would take some information that we've gathered through our surveys and provide an update for you tonight. Um, we also were waiting to see how um, the Governor Mills administration was going to designate York County, which came back Friday as green, um, which would indicate that um, we could potentially open in hybrid based on that designation. Um, so the purpose of tonight is to kind of go through some of this data and then have a conversation about um, how to move ahead for the fall or the start of the school year. So at, at a point throughout this evening, we will need a motion and we will need to accept form of um, attendance in school for September. So there's that piece. Just to recap that on Friday we were designated um, as green for York County. Here's the survey information and I will read it just because it is a little far. Um, as of August 17th, we've had 82 families sign up for hybrid. In the July 31st survey, 91.7% of staff responded that they would be able to return to work following health and safety guidelines outlined by the CDC, the main DOE, and DHHS. 8.3% of staff reported that they would need additional com uh, accommodations. And since then, since that time, we've been meeting with staff to talk about those particular accommodations. And some of those range from additional PPE, such as shields that um, cover their chin, go under their chin and over their faces, um, to other kinds of health pieces that they may have. Um, so we're working with the, the staff member and their physician to work through the best kind of um, accommodations to meet that. So um, the, third, the third piece is that a uh, fall planning survey was distributed to staff in late May. The purpose was to collect feedback to assist with our planning process for the 2020-21 school year. 384 staff of 603 responded to the survey. Of particular note, there was a specific question regarding comfort level in returning to the school in the fall. So here is the chart. So the question was about returning to, the, to fall, to school in the fall. And we had a scale from one to five. One was very uncomfortable. Five was very comfortable. So you can see um, we had 8.9% of those that took the survey at a one, 15.1% at a two, 30.5% at a three, 19.5% at a four, and 26% at five, which was very comfortable. This was in May. This is like a preliminary survey to the before we're like, okay, this is good. And then now we need the last survey we sent. I was like, we gotta figure this out. <laughs> and we use this to help guide us in our development of our three phases. 
This is our transportation update. So in a typical year, we transport 72% of our student body to school. With the current guidelines, we will be able to transport 52% of our students. Utilizing shuttle runs, if necessary, we could transport up to 1,652 students. And currently, we only have 1,100 students registered for transportation. So that's 37% of the total amount of students that have signed up for hybrid. Uh, and we will put out another call out tomorrow just to make sure that we have we haven't missed any money in those registrations. Sure. How many how many parents have not done the registration? We have uh, pretty close to 3,000 actually who have registered. So we're at probably, we're, you know, there's probably 100 to 150 parents that are chasing that. And pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. And schools have been calling since last week. They've been making contact with everybody they haven't heard from. Or transportation one that we didn't have to fill out anymore. If you are not registered, so, so the registrations are only for those that are interested. We're going to send a, again. We're going to send another call up and say, "Hey!" But when we sent out our parent survey earlier, we asked how many folks could transport, and the numbers that we turned, it was probably I think we had about fifteen hundred just responding. Um, Fifty percent of those said that they could transport their kids, which actually translates kind of exactly to what this looks like. So. The schools have come up with a plan of orientation to get uh, specific grade levels in transitional years, primarily in at different times. So this is the proposal for September 8th. Uh, kindergarten would come in by appointment. So that would be at each building. They would come in to meet with the teacher. So the parent, the student, and the teacher would meet together. Um, and then grade 5 and Lebanon, so they would be at the middle school, our current middle school and then grade six up here. Um, September 9th, it would be district kindergarten in all of their buildings, and then seventh grade. September 10th would be first grade and third grade, and then row up fifth grade at the middle school, and eighth grade. And September 11th would be second grade and fourth grade, grade five for North Berwick, and the ninth grade. And September 14th would be the start of the schedule. So that's the current uh, proposal as far as orienting some of those students at those transition grades. Do so kids 10 through 12, would they be having some sort of remote orientation with teachers, meeting, getting? Currently, we're looking at them actually beginning on the 14th. However, SRTC is going to start earlier than that. So those. 11th to 12th graders will be heading in sooner. Um, and we're open to like a conversation regarding, you know, connections earlier. Yeah, I mean, we're just the, trying to, the majority of their learning is going to be remote anyway. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no reason they couldn't right. at least begin some sort of orientation. Part of this was just a, um, a reflection on the phase in that, that folks talked about at the board level, thinking the phase in would be helpful. So we asked our team to come up with. This sort of orientation piece, so it fades us into a full on on the 14th. What about the lower grades that are wrong? Is there a little support these two? Right, so everybody, if you can see. Um, you mean the ones that just signed up for 100% for a moment? Yes. They can potentially start earlier. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yes. No, yeah. And I think those are. If that's the information that we wanted to share. And then ask any questions, like questions that you have of us regarding the plan. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's the board's you know, purview as to how you would like to be in our school. I've got one quick question. Um, with the survey that went, I'm sorry, the registration that went on for the parents, um, the date on there, there's some of them. In terms of feeling like, oh, we don't want four months of our kid having to stay home. We thought we could do it for a short period and then send them back to school, something along those lines. Um, I guess clarification a little bit for that, but also if they signed up for hybrid, feeling like they, they had to because of that, um, is there 
the way out for them. I know they've already done the registration, I just where it was confusing when I opened the journal and I knew it was really negative. So in the survey, we did have it um, by the semester because of the high school, so that's why it was written that way. But we certainly um, understand that parents may want to come in and out of, if they start hybrid, they may want to go to remote and vice versa. So we do have the ability to have students re-enter or to leave. Re-entering might take a little more time just because we have to make sure that things were set up for them ahead of time, um, but we certainly have that availability. Right. So we can clarify that again. That's what I thought I was yeah. from the yes. and then when I was having questions about it, the way that the other people would interpret that to me, maybe I was confused, I just want to make sure I want to get that across. Yes. 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 But there's always the, I mean, our group, our role is to educate it. So if folks want them to be in school, then we can provide that learning and do the best we can to do that. If the, the issue will be, um, so if they sign up for a moment and want to then move in, there may be a time frame where they have to transport so we can figure out the transportation. So that, that's actually typical of the registration. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, Are gonna, you know, get all the information they need. 
Um, do we want to ask? Yeah, because I believe that we have our high school admin team on, and we also have Shannon on as our curriculum specialist. So Joe is online. Yes, we're going to uh, do our very best to um, get through as much curriculum as possible, but we also realize that we're not going to be able to go as quickly as we have in the past, um, but we're going to do the very best we can to get through it all, especially for the AP classes who are assigning additional time to those students so they can move along as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, and the other thing to be said is that we're going to be doing similar to our weekly protocol checks in terms of our kids, you know, following what they need to do. We'll also be looking at, you know, check-ins pretty regularly with all of our, um, all of our administrators actually on how things are going um, for our students. This six through this this is a huge change for six through twelve. So we really need to have that conversation. Oh, we need to talk louder. Okay. Um, yeah, so and, and so, do we have a good answer for you? Not exactly, but it's part of the process of like going through this and making sure. I believe strongly that we learned a tremendous amount in the spring when we did this very quickly. We shifted to remote, and we learned a lot from our successes and from our uh, less successful training. So I know that our teachers and our administrators are looking at improve the practice as best we can. Um, another high school question, do we have the option of giving the seniors a late shot at SATs in school? Uh, I don't know that. It was still unmuted. Joe is still, do you know anything about the SAT option, Joe? Yes, we're still uh, looking at that, but it looks like we're going to be able to give uh, our students the What about, I think, I think, um, yeah, we're looking at the SAT. Yes. We're going to be able to do the SAT as well. Okay, and cool. For the senior, we'll put Mara, the director of guidance. Thank you. We have October 14th scheduled to give the SATs and the PSATs to all juniors for the PSATs and all seniors who wish to take it. They will have to pay for it because the state is no longer covering it. Um, but October 14th is the date that we currently have slated to allow all seniors to take the SAT that they want and they pay for it and juniors to take the PSAT. That's fantastic. Good news. Thank you. Um, but in the four days since I've seen everybody a copy of this thing I pulled together, we had 100 more cases of COVID in the state in just those four days, and 12 of those were in New York County, and we had one death. The main general is looking fairly safe in terms of numbers, but uh, Governor Mills herself said in her recent statement when she uh, extended the state of emergency, we cannot let our guard down. This deadly virus is still with us. And while I am proud the progress name has made, we are not immune from the surges we have seen in other states. We must all stay vigilant and stay safe. We all know there was a Memorial Day surge here, and there's going to be another one in September. Um, there have been a number of super spreader events, like the Motorcycle Valley out west. Um, right now, we're going on in New Hampshire. There's a religious group that's having a massive meeting, and then there's a community to the south place. And Said that they won't do any precautions in terms of not um, That's going to have to look at whether or not they are something about in our neighborhood. We work at the Labor Day weekend with the parents as well, and we know that we can have a lot of great visitors. Right on the heels of those spreader events. Um, and that is itself a super spreader event to happen here. So it's likely going to have families in the district who also have parties. Um, that could have an impact on that. Um, and as of August 8th, the state has returned to the danger zone in terms of uh, crossing infections. At this point, we are at a rate where every person um, on average who has the virus is infecting one other person. That's on average. So some people may not infect anybody, but everybody infects five. 
Um, and while we have a plan in this district that is awesome, I really feel strongly that the state of Maine doesn't have the capacity for testing that we need to make the plan work safely for our students. Um, on June 8th, the governor announced uh, expanded testing capabilities. We have testing sites within 30 minutes of, of most of the population, but that's not reality yet. I spent a good bit of time today pretending I needed to get a test. Um, maybe to put a few to anybody didn't want to clock the line. But I went to the website that the government site provided. I clicked through to the various clinics. Um, and it's certainly confusing. I did this in part because of heard some fun personal experiences from uh, people in the community about how difficult these problems they had to get their kids tested. It is confusing. There's two kinds of tests. The NAAT, which tells you in 15 minutes whether or not you're sick. Um, you don't need a doctor's referral, yay. Um, you don't need insurance. You don't even need to be shown symptoms, which is awesome, because children very often are asymptomatic, right? Um, but you do not have to have a $25 fee. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's going to be a problem for some of our families. The other test takes 24 to 48 hours. You do need to get a doctor's referral. That's a problem for some of our families. And it's not so easy to get that referral because there aren't enough to do the test surrounding the rash. And you also need insurance. If you don't need insurance, you have to fill out the state COVID insurance coverage application. So it's a lot of steps for some of our families. So, okay, cool. Let's, let's send our students to get the NAAT test. Well, as of this morning, there's no availability at the one location in the range here at North Hospital until September 20th. It's the middle of August, and we have to wait until September 20th. I can't even imagine what the wait time is going to be once school starts. So we have essentially no way to get any student to present a fever or other symptoms to get tested. So what do we tell our families? I mean, the first are posting this, you know, there's no liability for injury or death of individual contributing to illnesses that result from contracting COVID-19, assuming the risk of entering the family. And that's horrible. Um, so what are we going to do if someone comes in with a fever? Um, it doesn't matter how good our hybrid plan is if we don't have the means to test and, and get buy-in from all of our families. Um, and we do have that problem with buy-in. Our staff and families know it, which is why we have been getting these letters from staff saying, please, let's start remote. Um, they're the ones who are going to be on the front line. And one of the letters cited um, the, the main Department of Education to reverse that 72% of educators and 77% of support staff are deeply concerned. I went and read that report. It gets worse. They're even more worried for the students. 82% of teachers and 80% of support staff are highly worried for their students. Um, and the majority of parents, 59%, are worried. Only three and a half in ten think their kids will wear masks and do the distancing protocol. Oh, sorry, I'm going to kind of interrupt, and because I think that all of this is incredibly important information, but I feel like we need to say, um, okay, then I'll cut to the chase. The point is, hybrid is unique. We don't know that it's going to work. In fact, there are epidemiologists who are saying, oh my god, what you're doing is you're taking the idea of the cohort and shredding it because the students aren't just with the cohort during the week in a hybrid setting. They go home, they go to the daycare, they go to other whatever. So you are creating a situation where you don't have to use the cohort. It might work. We don't know. And I don't have the district to get into it. I propose that we start in the local mode. Both to buy us time distance from the super spreader event of Liberty Weekend and to see what's going on and how it works in other districts that are following the right model so that we can adapt and learn the lessons we want to endanger our students and our staff in the That's really the key to the government. Um, the, 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 you know the problem for the students. So you are, you need to, 
of symptoms to go by if a student or staff presents to their school nurse. Um, I think this information will be going out shortly when the staff today. Um, so we have it listed as if we see a student or staff with one of the lower risk symptoms, and they are qualifying their list of lower risk symptoms as headache, malaysia, which is like body aches, a runny nose, or congestion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Or any of those symptoms present beyond typical allergies. So if they've got um, two or more of those lower risk symptoms, or if they have one of the higher risk symptoms, which they list as a new uncontrolled cough, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing, not exercise and asthma, uh, new loss of taste or smell, a fever of 100.4 or higher, chills, shakes, or sore throat. So if they have one of those symptoms or two of the other ones, and they have not been exposed to anyone with COVID-19, um, then we will send them home and suggest that they be seen by their physician. And then whether there's different uh, pathways, if a swab is done and it's negative, if uh, they were seen by their physician and no swab is done, and they've got like, an alternative diagnosis, um, if throat or such, and if there was a positive test, um, we would call, follow the 10 days out. Um, we don't return for 24 hours if you have symptoms and fever. Um, these people would also need to be cleared by the DOC. They would be able to them. Um, these are pretty much the consistency of the symptoms. And then there's a case if the um, parent or staff member refused to be seen then they would still need to stay out for the 10 days, 24 hours and such. And then as far as 
getting a referral, um, we do have our medical director who's affiliated with the hospital. I can be in contact with her. Um, and we don't currently have a, another nurse practitioner working at the health center right now, um, so she will be in contact with her. Um, I have another question
see for one another, we have to deal with that on an individual basis. I don't know if I'm probably just saying to everyone, you know, go on remote. And have the teachers been preparing for remote all summer, or are they preparing to do the hybrid model? It's, they've been doing both, honestly, because we are, we knew that this would be a, a very, okay, just I did, it sounded like we were headed hybrid, and all these teachers were like, <laughs> like, okay, to the hybrid thing, then, oh no. I feel confident, I feel confident that either model, our teachers are ready to implement. I think that's fair. Nation now that COVID is still children, and there are a number of papers that are currently in pre so they would use that cell site just so they cannot be put out there. But they are pointing to very clear evidence that it's not just a question of graphics, but it's something actually happening out there. It's put the whole six foot rule out the window as it were. And in fact, part of the problem with that then is air conditioning. For example, there was a restaurant where the person next to the virus only found these seated across the restaurant who were exposed to air vents from where that person was sitting. Not the somebody else, not the server, not the other customers. It came to them through the definition of consent. That's really important to know. So, if I recall from the last year, you guys got something to come in and do with that. I was going to say Kevin is on, but we, so it's specialty services that does our, our HVAC work, and they've gone to every building, they've made recommendations, um, we talked about, um, with them, they talked about keeping the circulation going, so our fans are blowing a certain way, doors to classrooms are open, so they were getting that circulation going through the entire building. Air quality tests have been done. We, we have not failed an air quality test no. in our rooms, no. um, in our buildings. The very fact that the air is circulating through the building might end up actually being an issue if the droplets are in fact. Okay. That's why we have masks on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, the we are the only thing we have any other services. I'm curious about it. Joanne? I'm curious about it. Yeah, yeah. I shared a document with board members that are afraid to get buried in with other emails. It was a COVID 19 help from the COVID 19 health care coalition. And um, a friend of mine works at MITRE, and they were a big part of this, this study that was done. And she shared it with me the day that the white paper was released. And they, it, what it has done is give us guidance as to we look at our situation in our communities and we figure out what's best for us. We don't care, but we do care. It doesn't really matter to us what's happening in Boston or New York or any place else. We need to care about what's happening in our district, in our three towns. And we need to look at the criteria of how it's affecting our students, how it's affecting our, our parents, um, the so the um, emotional stress and strain having on our students and the importance that getting our kids back in the, in the school system. And I mean these people, these are all these people that really just fall for me. They're the ones that have been in the midst of this from the very beginning. So this to me, I would say this information for me to about everybody else that that's out there. Um, and they do look at situation and I'm looking for our administrators, uh, the facilities people, they know that the people that are going to go on, they know what we need to do to keep us to the state. Nobody wants to put anybody in the ground's way. And I think we can do this. I think a hybrid plan that everyone has come up with is a good plan and we've got to change things if we need to. It's not set in stone that this is how we're going to go for the next five months. We're going to look at the data as Audrey has presented to us at a previous meeting. We're going to reevaluate. We're going to see what's 
see what's going on and then we're going to change course if we need to or we're going to keep going ahead. But the important thing is getting these kids back in school, getting the kids that need the, social, the special services, um, whether it is even just coming in to get a, a, a meal, getting the kids back in school. I think we need to move forward with the plan that um, the administration has brought towards us. I think it's an excellent plan and I think it's worth us getting behind and supporting. Joanna, I just, I just found your email and just brought it to the beginning of everyone's inbox again. I just thought I'd doubt that. One thing, Joanna, I know the solution is that give the holiday time to pass us with all, yeah, sure, all the communities, but people are going to be helping through our communities because of the holiday. So, what current plans are going to do right now? My current plans are to reach the community and maybe I'm going to drop guess it, but I can't pull it up right now. 40, 40 people a month with yeah. full active growth the whole process. Yeah. That's not that's not active right now. I can't tell you that I'm being active right now, but the power three towns have been very small. The whole state has been very small, which is a good thing for us, right? But I guess that one person can cause 100 people. So we have plans in place to try to adjust that and try and minimize that. But we have to focus on everything, not just this one little thing. And there's so much that goes involved in the whole process that we have to, and we have, and I know we have, not just us, but the admin team and everybody has, has accounted for the whole process. And all that we can do is do what we have done. We have given them options. We have given people the option to go remote if they want. We have clarified tonight that they can go remote or they can go higher and speak for remote, or vice versa. So we've given them the options that they need to get this process going on our end. The statistics that we're seeing from our people are pretty clear. From our constituents and constituents are pretty clear that 82% of them want to go back to school. Want to go back to high school. And a majority of them are telling us we want to go back. My teachers, my majority of them are telling us to go back. Of course, every single one of us. I'm a parent. I'm a parent of kids in school. I've got concerns about them like this. But they've also been active this summer, and we've had zero weeks, right? And I get tomorrow we have an issue in case. That's why we're going to reassess this on a week to week basis. And if those parents that don't feel comfortable with a hybrid model, they have the option to go remote if they want to go remote. I don't think we should take away an option for our families. If our families, we give them our two options, I just from that we don't hybrid. With the option that they want to go remote. They don't want to go remote. I mean, if they don't want to go hybrid, they can go remote. That's their choice. You come in and teach those kids then? Yeah. My teachers have to stay on. My teachers have two questions to answer. And I would answer those questions. I read those questions. They have the option. They must put their names to it too. Well, what are you doing? We have to have an option. Okay. All right. Let's go. Um, I'd like to hear from everybody, um, just to, to make sure that everybody has a voice, but we let you mm -hmm. go for your thing, so let's everybody put their own opinion for I just want to say that I'm doing this for the next two weeks. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We all have views that need to be heard. So we hear the proposal there is to delay two weeks. So heard. And Rebecca, if you want to go ahead, I'll make sure that we hear from Stephanie and Bill. Uh, so, yeah, um, I just want to say that um, I think you know you did a survey of the teachers, but it wasn't anonymous, right? So everybody um, had a, it was basically, as far as I understand, you if you don't have a reason, like you're not on the CDC list of conditions where you really can't go in, like you have lupus or something, you have, have to go back um, because the parents want to go back. And, you know, initially I was in favor of the hybrid plan because I, you know, I was viewing it more as a logistical problem, but I think that the more I thought about it and the more I've seen happening in other, in other districts, and I know, you know, Maine is different, but, um, and I think then we have a case up in Piscataquis County, and that's pretty rural. Um, 
if we don't have any boundaries, people can come into the state at any time. They can come up to Florida or Texas or whatever. We're not immune by any stretch of the imagination. And we're still having like well, like a thousand people a day in this country dying from this thing. Um, and I feel like at my job, we had to go back on June 29th if we didn't have a condition. It was either, you know, you go back or you need your job, you know, basically. I don't want to put another worker in that position, and I feel like we're putting the teachers in that position. And I think they maybe they they feel obligated to because they're dedicated to, to educating kids, which is admirable, but I don't think that you should put a position, put them in the position of having to put their health on the line for that when their job can be done remotely. And um, so, I mean, I'm at this point leaning in favor of remote. Um, even more than two weeks. I, I just I'm much more worried. We're gonna have a second. We're gonna have a second wave, and um, just the news and everything has made me feel very much more pessimistic about it. The way it's being handled. I and I know people say you can get tests, but I don't think the tests are that easy to get, and you have to be motivated to go get. And some of the working families in our district just don't have the wherewithal to do that. They're just they, you know, trying to get by. Um, so that's just my two cents about it, and that's how I feel. And I'm trying to vote with the street uh, about at least at the very beginning to start remotely. Maybe if things change, you know, we can change that. But I want to err on the side of caution. So can you talk a little bit about, um, I think that maybe more happened with the sort of conversation with the teachers than is immediately apparent. So you had said that, um, you know, it, it's not just if you yourself as a like there's a process. So so maybe you can talk a little bit about yeah, that. I mean, I think we've done more than people realize. Right. So what we did was we did have two questions on the survey. There's no question about that. We did ask for names because of Somebody's asking for an accommodation. We need to know who that is, so we know who we need to, you know, work through with. Um, we had people sign off that they needed accommodations, not just for themselves, but because they're living with somebody at the home that ha has an immunocompromised situation, or they're caring for somebody, a, a parent, and they're in their 90s. So we certainly have seen the gamut of um, staff in talking with us about different pieces, whether it be their own or somebody in their family. Um, we also, um, if they weren't necessarily responding to that questionnaire survey right away, they also had an opportunity to talk to the building administration or the union, union representative. So then, um, so, so that's kind of where we're at. So we feel everybody that has we feel that everybody that had that level of concern for somebody in their family or for themselves was able to reach out to either at the building level, the union level, or, or through that survey. Enough. So, we've heard a couple of times we've seen some of the emails and we just started again. I've had the opportunity, I've had the opportunity to uh, you know, express their concern to the union. Have we gotten a response from the union? Jamie, yes. Jamie, Jamie's here, and she's the president of the union. Uh, they've actually been with us right along through this whole thing, working through the process. Yep. Um, I will tell you that we did not ask the question, should we come back or should we not come back to school? We did not ask our teachers if we should return. Um, this is a hugely polarizing situation that we're in, and it's not here just in MSCD 60, it's throughout the country. Um, we understand how hard it is. Uh, we don't have a good, we don't have the, the, the right answer. We have the answer currently that we felt was best for kids, like that's what we're presenting to you because of that, in terms of just getting our kids back and making connections with their teachers. We are probably just as conflicted as every one of you. Um, and I know that our teachers are as conflicted. Um, and I don't, like, I wish that we had better um, ability to just say, this is the right thing to do. We, we, I think 
we are going by the fact that we are a, quote, a green state, a green county, and the hybrid model for us made the most sense for that indication from our government, from our, from our state government. Uh, do we all have concerns? Absolutely. Do we want to do the, the best thing that we can do right this minute? Yes. And I wish that I had a, a stronger conviction, I guess, one way or the other, to be honest with you. Um, if you were to ask me alone, I just want to see kids. I want to get adults who are not necessarily their parents with them because everybody needs um, other adults in their lives and I want the education process to try to move forward. Uh, but, but we will do whatever this board, and I hate to put that burden on you, but I think that is kind of the deal. We will do to our best ability whatever you think we should do. And it could change in 24 hours. <laughs> That's the problem. I have a question. Um, have you played around with the numbers at all on how many um, teachers you're going to need for these co cohort groups for the remote kids? And does that match up with the number of staff that are going to be teaching remote? Does that make sense? It does make sense. And we are working through that because we, we're still getting, we haven't met through all of our staff yet, right? Or those that, so they need combinations. We have about so we have 20 yeah. more meetings probably oh, on the next few days just to meet with, with staff members. Um, currently, it's matching up pretty well, pretty well. And, we'll, we'll, and we may have to make some adjustments uh, just to work with families and with, with, I mean, with um, staff members. But currently, we're in a, in a pretty... And how, how big do you think these cold work groups will be? Um, so, we want a regular size classroom. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe like, you know, which is a little higher than our 13 or right, 14. Yeah, we're pulling, basically we're pulling numbers right now of how many folks are um, remote versus hybrid choices, and yeah, I think they're reasonable. So would there be a possibility, well, this would mess up the regular school schedule. If we needed more, uh, oh, more, 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 yeah. more, more of the people yeah. for maybe yeah. be on the list saying, we, we actually have a list of teachers that if, there, if the option were to be remote, if, yes, we have, we have that option. We definitely have um, several teachers who said, if I could be remote, I would like to do that. I don't have a particular medical condition myself, but there's, you know, the other part of this, guys, is child care issues. We have a lot of child care issues for our staff who are living in other districts, and their, that remote or hybrid plan doesn't match up with our hybrid plan. So, this isn't just about um, the medical piece, it's also about just child care and families in general. I mean, it's just like it's impacting every resident who has children in school, it's impacting all of our staff who have children of school age. Um, it's super complicated. It's, yeah. I assume that even though that uh, survey or questionnaire went out, the staff still has the option to make the changes from this point forward if things change. Yes. They're not committed to whatever they answer on that survey. They, if something changes, they need to look at all the options. They can reach out to you guys and make other options. Great. We will do our very best to accommodate the needs of our staff. I mean, that is, I don't know that there's anybody out there who, who would say that we haven't been trying really hard to make, to make people's needs. However, there are a group of folks in every building, I'm sure, who are philosophically really struggling with coming back. Get that. Can we hear it from Jamie? I'd love to hear what Jamie has to say. Oh, Jamie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jamie. Well, it was it was a great year to take over as president um, <laughs> and superintendent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Audra and I are going to go eat lots of steak um, in a few weeks. Um, so um, we have been in contact as an association with the MEA um, as much as we possibly can pretty much a couple times a week, um, if not more, regarding their guidance on what's happening. Unfortunately, as you all know, there's really no precedence for what's going on right now. Um, in regards to staff um, and how staff are feeling, Sue is absolutely correct in the fact that our staff right now is incredibly polarized. Um, 
based on the feedback that I'm getting right now, um, there seems to be the largest concern at the high school level. And I do know that um, there were a couple letters that were presented to school board members. And although the association didn't write those letters, we can't ignore that there are underlying concerns which um, they present and that it may in fact represent an even greater population or number of staff members at Noble High School. So we're looking at that and we're talking with Sue and I'm reaching out every week and trying to encourage members to please contact us if you need accommodations. We can meet with Sue, we can meet with Audra and Eva and we can work through those processes. Um, and Travis, I really appreciate the question that you just asked about can staff change their mind? Um, because that I think is a fair question. Um, so I appreciate that and I was happy to hear Sue's answer. And I, I really do believe very strongly that the district is willing to work with us as much as they possibly can to, to support teachers in this. It's, it's not easy. And, and again, Sue said it perfectly. It's incredibly polarizing. Um, I will say, you know, as we're, we're a little looking at a little bit more of our highest, um, I'm sorry, our um, most um, vulnerable population at the high school. We're watching this situation really closely to make sure that um, class sizes are staying small and we are, you know, talking with Sue and Audra about that and, um, you know, checking out side um, space limits six feet apart, following CDC guidelines very specifically. And tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we have a meeting with them to go over, um, you know, working condition accommodations to the contract. So, I mean, we're definitely on it. Um, I don't know if I've answered your question or if you have any other questions for me. We're trying to reach out to staff as much as we possibly can. Um, and I'm on the phone pretty much all day, every day. Um, and I also am in contact with other um, presidents from York County. Did I answer that question, Travis? Yeah. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Linda or Stephanie, do either of you guys have any other thoughts that you want to put out there? Mm -hmm. I've gone back and forth a couple of times, and I think I just want to do it. I'm sure I'm confused. If all you put forth is just a hybrid room and that is it, I, I would be saying no. Um, but because we're giving parents that option, and you are to say, you know, no, I'm not going to, as a parent, I'm going to go remote. Um, and they really need to be able to think of that into their own. Yeah, I start out remote for the first couple of weeks, things to do one way or the other, and I can change them on one day to school. May think a couple of weeks that I can make the best of my child. Or either way, I put my child in, I can just, I don't know, I can just say goodnight, whatever. Um, I'm going to call the school and put them into the mode. Um, I think because we're on from both of those options, and you know, our communication is having to really be true out of anything that possibly can happen. I think that, you know, if the parents are giving some options as well. Choice, but I'm going to get the best of that house. 
our folks are trying to work through. I'm gonna touch I'm I've been coaching baseball for the last month mm -hmm. two. Yeah, I don't remember now. But we've done the maths, we've done social distancing, we've done it's not gonna be easy. It's not to easy. Keep these kids separate. But it wasn't easy for me mm -hmm. to keep them separate and, and it didn't happen all the time. We have you know, had zero issues with that aspect either. But it's, it's, they were gonna have some hiccups along the way. The kids are gonna wanna play with the kids, but they're doing it now in the summertime. Kids are getting together and playing with other groups of well, kids. Just, other kids right? In general, um, daycares and programs, summer programming, is they have different standards than what they're asking for us for in our world. So, um, and that's a little bit changing. They're, they're trying to sort of mesh it a little bit more with what the schools are doing, but yeah, so there's there is definitely um, there's just a lot. It's just this is a lot. Right. <laughs> this is a lot. What we're doing, no matter what we do, remote or in hybrid, is a lot. I really like this orientation thing because you got one class in the building. You can take them everywhere and show where everything is. It's more the kids. Yeah, and this makes you feel even more yeah. comfortable with that, that aspect of moving these kids around to different schools. And allowing them to have that freedom one day of going in and looking and seeing what this school is all about before I then go in there with everybody that's in there with all the added safety measures that need to follow on a day to day basis. So, I, I, I do, I like this, I think it's great. Um, I don't personally see any reason that the 10 through 12 should be having their own remote. Um, orientation and you know it's I don't I, I don't see why I, I don't have any idea why they wouldn't do that so um, but and then my two cents on all the rest of it is one thing that we haven't talked about is the fact that we don't currently have the technology set up to start kindergartners off remote so if we went to a remote they don't right they don't, we, we currently not. don't if, if the devices physically are not yeah. able to be shipped here until, I think Chris shared with us, like early to mid-September. Yes. Yeah, so and then there's a whole process that goes with that, so it honestly will be October-ish before everything's put where it needs to be, and unfortunately, right. probably second week of October. So that's so, concerning. Too. Yeah, so that's a big thing. Um, my thoughts on the rest of it are we have given families full you know, choice to do what is right for them. I think that we've done the best accommodations that we can for teachers. Um, you know, I I have seen the incredible impact that remote learning had on kids um, that I sort of think of as a silent majority, which is there are a tremendous number of kids, K through 12, that, um, you know, struggled with social emotional, they struggled with, uh, the, and these are not, this is not different learning styles, these are kids that struggle, they're smart kids, they're everything in between, and I, you know, I just, I've seen how, how incredibly challenging that was for so many kids, and those kids are not ones that are going to speak up and complain about it, they are not ones that are going online and talking about it, they just, they just sort of took it, and, and I, you know, I, I just think, I feel for those kids, and my preference is that, and I, and I, you know, feel like I've struggled over both sides of this for however long we've been talking about it, but um, I feel like we've come up with a very solid plan given the numbers and data that is in front of us. And as long as we have the um, a plan and really the confidence to switch to remote if we need to, um, I would much rather have us get these kids going for so many reasons. And then, you know, if it's a weekend and we have to switch, then we switch. It's not a failure. It's just it's how the plan is going. But I would much rather look at the all of the data that's in front of us currently where we are and make that decision with an incredibly solid plan in place to 
you know, to make a change should be too. That's, that is, um, yeah, those are all my notes. Those <laughs> I, I got to, when you said it first, I got to agree with her that I think the high school grade should have some sort of orientation or start their school for a little bit on the end. <laughs> Something. There's no reason why they can't yeah. keep going. Whether it's a free orientation aspect or it's a full blown, the ages we start running a lot of them. I don't see why they can't, why they shouldn't. They definitely keep going as well. I would just like to say that if we open them up in the beginning, we need to look around and see how that works in the hybrid model for other districts. Okay, it turns out, looking back, that we were over precaution. Nobody was good. If we do open a hybrid mode and someone yeah. dies, it's fun. We really have to look at the rest of that. I agree with that, and I keep going back to that in my head, and that's probably what's led me from going back and forth this whole time. I do think it's very smart to watch and see how other districts do fight. And, I, and this is the only thing that's kind of got me tipped over the other way. It's just, why, why should we say to the parent, well, you know, what you want for your kid doesn't matter. You know, I guess that's how I'm trying to look at it. Uh, uh, the parent is the parent's personal choice. Then and the children, if they felt like that, they should be keeping them. If this were an expectation, then we would make the choice to try to not do it. It's our responsibility to look up for the safety of the child. But the, the responsibility is for all the children. And some of the kids are really struggling with it. It's probably two weeks. I'm talking about uh, kids that really need to be here in the floor. They have to be in school with their peers because it's been so hard. You know, when the kid committed suicide because they just couldn't stand it anymore. They needed to get back to the and once again, you push it back. So we can look at, I understand what you're saying, Stringer, but we can look at that from both sides. And so, so and John, that's, that's not what happened. That's, oh, yeah. that's, that's real. <laughs> so I think we really need to just move forward with this plan mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll, we can find that we do this fight and we need to change things to do this. But I think this is the best plan to start. We've given that the option for a verbal attempt. If we were to say we're going to hybrid and you're coming with us, yeah. then that's a problem. And we're not. <laughs> I feel that if we say we're going to remote and you're coming with us, that's the same call that we're doing it for one hybrid year coming up. We give them the option to go hybrid or remote. Let them make their choice. Yeah, but we have to put some responsibility lit lace with the parents mm -hmm. as well. But it, you know, we, they have to make the final choice. Do we feel like we are ready to uh, make a motion? I just have one more quick question. Um, I couldn't absorb what was what you said before about the whole like kindergarten. We don't, have the, we don't have the technology we can play, so if we went remote, we, can, we don't have the tablets for the caregivers in, in house right now, so there would be no technology for them to be doing remote learning. Oh, if, if it was like to full rent, remote. No, we're right. just starting in a fully remote. If we started oh, oh, for the first time, yeah. day, okay. for any amount of time, there's yeah. nothing for those kindergartners to have at home. They basically would be out of school. Right. Well, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's our kindergarten teachers would put together packets and they'd have a different type of an experience remotely right. than the first graders who have their tablets. So, do you take home work? You just want to give them have the technology yeah. you already have it all the way. Or Kay would. Or the visuals with the teachers. Right, right. They would have that connection. Right. It, would be, it would be different. So, the one that would be the same is the one that we would sign up for remote. So, you'd be able to do that just like with the course. Well, so even the little guys that are starting remote, we don't necessarily have the technology available to them yet. So that's going to be that is something that teachers will be working with them until until all the pieces come in. I mean, that that's just the fact that um, this pandemic has created quite a, um, a need <laughs> for technology, and so things are things are where they're at in terms of. I just want to make sure I understand. Yep. Yeah, no, clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, does somebody want to make a motion to uh, begin the school year September 8th with the hybrid plan? That 
circumstances that have come up, so we're going to delay that for right now. Okay. And then, uh, do we still have some other employment? Yes. Okay. Sure. We, uh, we, have, we have two of the different positions on the right now? We had AJ that we um, yeah. hired, and then this is the, the latest one for Tyler. Tyler, AJ hired. Yes, yeah. AJ, we played something, uh, so we have a resignation from Amanda Debbie Bornberger from Pussy School. She taught kindergarten, um, and she's having some child care things going on. So she needs to she needed to uh, to resign from her position at Pussy. Um, and we have two new hires that we have. We have Luke, Amanda Ledoux, who is going to be teaching seventh grade math, and then Jessica Cavallari, who is going to be taking on the guidance position here at the high school. She's coming from New Jersey. Um, has been, had just finished a couple of long-term guidance positions there. And Amanda has been working in our district um, at the middle school as a med tech, so she's just changing her role. So both of them are very excited to be joining us. We have to, we have to make a motion to accept the resignation. Yes, yes, thank you. So even though we give you that um, authority over the summer, and that's for hiring or for hiring? That's for hiring. We have to, you know, okay. basically it's important that you know that we have people coming in. Okay. Well, when most of the group of other organizations are correct, Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Even? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got a young family and it's hard to figure out. Well, second. All in favor? Rebecca says yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any, any other, any others? I don't think so. I think we're all set. We're good. So next meeting, um, right. September, whatever that first Thursday is. Do we, do we, we don't have one this Thursday? Is there, is there, do we need to have one next week or shoot? Let's do it the third, that, what did you say that was? <coughs> the, the, well, the eighth is on Tuesday. So the tenth, unless we have the third. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to have one before we actually get going. Because we usually it's first and third. Right. The third is the tenth. So should we do the third? Yeah. Okay. And if anything, again, mm -hmm. there are in between. Uh, which, if, if Mike Roberts were here as a betting man, he would say probably something with mm -hmm. mouse. Okay, September 3rd, 7 o'clock. All right. In here? Yeah. Okay. And I know that this the, this question was asked for the younger kids, but do you know when the high schoolers are going to get their schedules? Didn't it come? Did it come today? Is that a problem? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you can log into your inventory camera. So the issue was the technology that came out when I didn't get it when my wife got it, but it didn't have a link attached. Okay. Right. So somebody, somebody on Facebook shared the link, and it tells you to go to the inventory campus to look at your desk. Okay. I think the last. There's actually, my guess, I think there was an actual message from Humble High School tonight that went out to say, check that link. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't see it. There was a link there. Right. Uh, so yes. Can you send the, your presentation to us? This yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. So, the, right. Sure. And, and, and that'll that go into the minutes. And well. you want the um, the correspondence that we're sending out tomorrow about the all the help stuff, too, as well? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And we'll just send you, we'll send you, I know some of you that have children have that, but we'll try to send you everything that we're sending out. I don't, I don't like you to Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rather read it on there than have a parent now. That's right. No, yeah. yeah. That, that's the biggest thing. Okay. Parent communication is so, at least I know with myself, like, only two or three guys have been crazy. Yes. And okay. so the more we can be educated, the better okay. we are. Okay. Solve some of the problems that are out there. Right. Solve some of the rumors that are being put out right. there. Right. Yeah. Mr. Somebody else has a lot to meeting. We have non parents who get put on. Did you get the text today from? Okay, so we should make sure. Yeah, so we get either of them. Okay, cool. I'll get you the list. Probably just the district ones. Not all the individual schools. Yeah. Yeah. I have some oh. like it's completely gone now. Maybe you you and I can be on the same page on the time when you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But I just realized we have to return. Oh, I'm making one for me too. Sorry. Jenna just texted that she just shared that presentation. Okay. Yeah. Um good listening to the reason. Okay. 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 All in favor? So Ms. Uh, I apologize. Who's that Rebecca? Stephanie Okay, thank you. Okay.